Hello Toppers, today we are going to discuss how to remember the named murmurs easily because this is one of the high yielding area where we will get direct questions. So let's see. So these are all the named murmurs. In case of systolic murmur, we have Carvello's murmur, then Roger's murmur or Bruidi's Roger, then Stills murmur. And in case of diastolic murmurs, we have lot of murmurs like Graham Steele murmur, Caricum's murmur, Aston Flint, then Right Hand's murmur, then Cabot Lock murmur, Colic Cecil murmur, then Dark's murmur and Key Hodgkin murmur or Bruidi shy. Then other murmurs were Gibson's murmur, Melville murmur, Pontaine murmur and Cruveller Baumgartner murmur. So, my first question is, what is murmur? So, murmur is nothing but sound produced due to any abnormal blood flow. And this abnormal blood flow may be due to lot of reasons like valvular stenosis or regurgitation. Any anatomical disturbances like VSD, PDA. And it can be seen in any other systemic diseases like anemia also so before entering in detail let me give you a basic explanation this is s1 this is s2 in previous video we had discussed regarding this s1 and s2 normal heart sounds so the cycle will be continuing in the same way so this s1 is due to the closure of mitral and tricuspid valve and here s2 is because of the closure of pulmonary and aortic valves so the same cycle will be repeating here the period between s1 and s2 is indicating the ventricular systole or directly systole where that time the ventricle will be under contraction state and here between s2 and s1 we can see the diastolic phase in ventricle that is ventricular relaxation So this is right side of the heart here we will be having the pulmonary valve in the pulmonary artery and here we will be having the tricuspid valve. So this is our left side of heart this is left atrium and this is left ventricle and here we will be having our mitral or bicuspid valve and this is our iota and here we will be having the aortic valve. So now regarding the state of ventricles during S1. So during S1 there will be closure of mitral and tricuspid. So simply blood, all the blood from atrium will enter into the ventricle. And after the complete pumping out of blood into the ventricle, these mitral and tricuspid valve gets closed. So now the ventricle is in completely filled state. So in order to pump out the blood, there arises the systole that is ventricular contraction. So because of ventricular contraction, all the blood will be entering into the pulmonary valve and aortic valve like this. So here there will be opening of pulmonary and aortic valve which helps in pumping out of blood into the pulmonary artery and aorta. And after the uh, at the end of the systole all the blood will be pumped out and there will be closure of pulmonary and aortic valve here so that will lead to the s2 heart sound so now the ventricle will be undergoing the relaxation so because of relaxation again what will happen again there will be opening of mitral and tricuspid valve so that the again blood will enter into the ventricle. So here S1 will be there when the ventricle is filled and the ventricle undergoes systolic phase that is contraction. And this contraction leads to the opening of pulmonary and aortic valve. Once the uh, blood gets pumped out of the pulmonary and aortic valve, again there will be closure of uh, op uh, pulmonary and aortic valve leading to the production of S2 heart sound. And uh, from there ventricle will undergo relaxation leading to the opening of mitral and tricuspid valve again. And then again the blood enters into the ventricle and the cycle repeats in the same pattern. So now we are very clear regarding the systolic and diastolic phase in the ventricle and adding to this we should know regarding two terminologies one is bruit and one is hum so whenever there is any abnormal sound due to the turbulence of blood flow in the artery it is called bruit and if the same thing happens in the vein then it is called hum so venous hum and arterial bruit so 
Now regarding the Carvelos murmur, this is S1 heart sound, then S2 heart sound and S1 again. So Carvelos murmur is nothing but an early systolic murmur which occurs on deep inspiration in tricuspid regurgitation. So let's see how it is happening. This is superior vena cava, this is inferior vena cava and this is our tricuspid valve and this is our pulmonary valve and this is our right atrium and this is our right ventricle. During deep inspiration, there will be decreased intrathoracic pressure and because of decreased intrathoracic pressure, there will be increase in the venous return through IVC and SVC. So here what will happen because of decreased intrathoracic pressure there will be more venous return from IVC and SVC entering into the right atrium. So already the patient is suffering from tricuspid regurgitation. So because of the volume overload there will be murmur that is none other than our Carvelos murmur. So because of volume overload and the valve is already suffering from tricuspid regurgitation that will lead to the increase in murmur. And this we can see also in subacute bacterial endocarditis in IV drug abusers. And the main clue to remember this Carvelo's murmur in TR is Carvelo C A R. You can remember as T small a and R. So car and tar. So Carvelo we can see in tricuspid regurgitation. This is one of the illogical mnemonic, but try to remember in this way. So now, Bruid D. Roger or Roger's murmur, already I had told regarding the terminology Bruid, Bruid is nothing but the vascular murmur produced mainly in the arteries. So here, it is none other than the holosystolic murmur, that is, we will be having this murmur completely throughout the systole like this. So it happens mainly in the ventricular septal defect. So whenever, if the defect is very small, if the opening is very small, that will create more turbulence in the blood flow leading to the increase in the loudness of murmur. So remember this murmur as Roger's sister got affected by VSD. So Roger is Roger's murmur and sister is systolic and it is due to ventricular septal defect. So as usual another illogical mnemonic, try to remember. Then comes our stills murmur. So this is also one of the systolic murmur which we had seen already and it is a benign murmur and uh, it extends from medium to long in the systolic phase and this is mainly due to the resonance of blood ejected into the iota or because of the vibration of cara tendine. So this is our left side of heart, this is left atrium, then left ventricle and this is our mitral valve and this is our aortic valve. Cardiac tendinase are nothing but the thread like structures which support the mitral and tricuspid valve in the one side and it connects with the papillary muscle in the other side. And here whenever the blood is getting ejected into the iota, there may be resonance which is creating the stills murmur or because of the vibration of cardia tendine which is present over here leading to this murmur and this murmur is commonly seen in children and this stills murmur is also called as innocent murmur. So then comes Graham Steel murmur which is an early diastolic murmur uh, seen mainly in pulmonary regurgitation. Now we are entering into the named diastolic murmurs which we can see here in the early diastolic phase. So here what is happening? There will be mitral stenosis. So imagine there is mitral stenosis. It is nothing but the narrowing of the mitral valve. So because of the narrowing there will be increase in the volume in left atrium. So because of increase in the volume in left atrium that will create a back pressure in the lung through the pulmonary vein and here because of the increased pressure that will lead to pulmonary edema and because of pulmonary edema and because of increased volume in the lung now it will lead to pulmonary hypertension and because of pulmonary hypertension what will happen? Pulmonary artery will get dilated. Because of dilatation, whenever there is relaxation, that is diastole is happening, pulmonary valve cannot close adequately. 
so because of the inadequate closure of the pulmonary valve that will lead to the regurgitation of blood and because of regurgitation we can hear this graham steel murmur so here it's like a cycle the problem is mainly in the right left side of the heart in the mitral area that is mitral stenosis so because of back pressure it is putting overload on the lung and the lung will be responding in the way of pulmonary edema and this edema leads to the pulmonary hypertension and because of pulmonary hypertension that will lead to the pulmonary artery dilatation and this pulmonary artery dilatation because of it during the diastole the pulmonary valve cannot close properly that will lead to the regurgitation of blood again and that will lead to the graham steel murmur so try to remember this graham steel murmur as gr and pr it another illogical mnemonic so then comes our carry coombs murmur which is the mid diastolic murmur in the rheumatic fever so here in the middle of the diastole we can see this carry coombs murmur so here what is happening because of rheumatic fever the cardiac muscle undergoes rheumatic pancarditis so rheumatic pancarditis is nothing but the inflammation of pericardium myocardium and endocardium so because of the transient inflammation of the heart whenever blood is passing through it it will produce a soft rumbling murmur and this soft rumbling murmur is none other than our carry coombs murmur and the most important thing you have to remember is this carry coombs murmur we will hear only during the acute rheumatic fever phase only because it is mainly associated with the transient inflammation of the heart so then comes aston flint murmur and it is also a mid late diastolic murmur like here we can see mainly it is seen in aortic regurgitation so let's see how it is happening so here the patient is already suffering from the aortic regurgitation so there is inadequate closure of the aortic valve so even after the systole complete uh, pumping out of blood outside the aorta there will be backflow of the blood into the left ventricle and because of the backflow it will affect the mitral valve opening also so because of uh, that there will be functional obstruction of mitral valve because of the functional obstruction blood from the left atrium will pass into the narrowed mitral valve leading to the aston flint murmur so i'm just repeating aston flint murmur is a mid late diastolic murmur in aortic regurgitation because of aortic regurgitation there is backflow of blood into the left ventricle because of the backflow of blood there will be a problem with the normal opening of the mitral valve and because of the normal uh, because of that issue there will be functional obstruction of the mitral valve so whenever the blood is pumping out from the atrium to the ventricle there will be narrowing of the mitral valve leading to this aston flint murmur then comes right hand murmur so right hand murmur is also a mid diastolic apical murmur in the complete heart block which we can hear this murmur mainly in the apical region so then comes cabot lock murmur so this is an early diastolic murmur here and we can hear this during severe anemic conditions then comes colley cecil murmur this is also an early diastolic murmur which we can hear mainly in aortic regurgitation which is radiating to the axilla so then comes dark murmur it is an early diastolic murmur we can hear this during the early diastole phase and this murmur is something special it is associated with pre systolic accentuation we can see this pre systolic accentuation here and this murmur is mainly due due to the severe stenosis of left anterior descending coronary artery and the most interesting thing is that why it is a diastolic murmur because this coronary arteries mainly supply the heart during the diastole phase so whenever any obstruction in the coronary artery will lead to the murmur mainly during the diastolic phase so then comes key hodgkins murmur or bruit de chai so already i told bruit is nothing but the vascular murmur in the arterial compartment so here it is a diastolic murmur which we can see mainly in aortic regurgitation so now we had completed the named systolic and diastolic murmur so now comes the melville murmur so this is due to the air in the right ventricular cavity after the cardiac catheterization so you can relate windmill 
with our R. So whenever there is R in the right ventricle, that will lead to the mill wheel murmur. You can remember with this illogical mnemonic as usual. Then comes spontaneous murmur. Already I had told hum is also the murmur sound which we can hear in the venous compartment. Here because of severe anemia, we can hear this venous hum in the cervical region. Then comes nuns murmur. It is also a venous hum at the root of neck. It is also called as brui d diabel. So then comes Gibson murmur which is also called as continuous murmur or mercenary murmur. We can hear this murmur throughout the face both the systolic and diastolic phase due in the patent ductus arteriosus. So PDA is nothing but the persistence of ductus arteriosus between the aorta and pulmonary artery. Yes, this is Cruveller Baumgarten murmur. It is also a venous hum which is the diagnostic of portal hypertension in the abdomen. So now let us have a quick recap. First is Carvelo's murmur, yet another uh, illogical mnemonic. Already we had told that is car and tar that is it occurs during the tricuspid regurgitation. Then comes Roger's murmur. Roger's sister got affected with VSD that is Roger's murmur is a systolic murmur due to VSD that is ventricular septal defect. So still, still this murmur is very innocent which is seen in children age group. And then comes Graham Steele murmur. Then comes our uh, illogical mnemonic that is GR and PR. Then comes Caricum's murmur which is related with rheumatic fever and mainly during the acute phase of rheumatic fever. Then comes Austin Flint murmur. You can remember it as AF and AR. Then comes right hands murmur. So usually we will be having left side pain in the cardiac issues. So you just remember that in complete heart block we will be having pain on the right hand Sorry for this worst mnemonic, but we have to remember somehow. So use it. In complete heart block, we will be having right hands murmur. So here comes cabot clark murmur, which we can see in anemia. So nowadays children, a lot of children are having anemic conditions. So parents are locking them inside the room to make them eat properly. I'm sorry for this again. And cholecystal murmur, it is related with aortic regurgitation. And then comes the dog's murmur. So here you can relate dog and cat. It's not cat, it is cat only. That is coronary artery disease. We can have this dog murmur. So dog and cat are together now. Then at last comes the key Hodgkin's murmur or brood de shy that is also related with aortic regurgitation. I think this aortic regurgitation is a very complicated condition having lot and lot of named murmurs also. Then comes Gibson murmur which is sour nothing but our PDA and uh, then comes mill wheel murmur I had told windmill is always related to the air so whenever there is air in the right ventricle due to cardiac catheterization that will lead to mill wheel murmur then here comes the Pontine's murmur which we can see in the cervical venous hum and then at last comes the Cruveller Baumgarten murmur which is related to the diagnosis of portal hypertension so this is all regarding the named murmurs and how to remember it very illogically so that we can give, score good marks in the examination. And now if you have any queries regarding this video, you can comment below. And if you have any suggestions for the topics to be discussed, that can also be commented below. Thank you so much and happy learning.